All right, uh, Dorpaton, what you're not understanding here is Chelmer's hard problem of consciousness. And uh, basically what this boils down to is you can study every aspect of the brain and write it all down in a book, you know, no complete total scientific knowledge of the brain, but the fact that the brain corresponds to a mind and why that is, is will still be completely mysterious once we have all the knowledge of the brain. And uh, to illustrate how this works, let's say that we don't know that human beings have brains in their head. We know that we think somehow, but we don't know the, the mechanism that corresponds to this thinking. So now, let's say that just someone ships in a, uh, a brain from a laboratory, from somewhere to a laboratory, and ships in a, a toaster oven or something. Okay, so now we can do experiments on both these items. We can see that one is made of iron and copper, the other one is made of organic tissue. We can then go into detail and break both of both these machines up into little, you know, tiny, you know, all the little constituent parts and analyze them all in great detail, and then we can collect, learn everything we know about the brain. But the thing is, is we don't know that the brain corresponds to a conscious being, and before we know that, we have no way at all of predicting that the random object that we got shipped to our laboratory that we call a brain is going to automatically correspond to consciousness. There's no, no reason to assume it rather than assume that the toaster oven is not going to be conscious at all. Um, now, the reason for this is, is you have the, the brain and the toaster oven when they're shipped to the lab, you can study them empirically, you gather all this empirical data from them, but the problem is is that the, the brain or the, the mind has a non-empirical component as well, and that's the, um, the a priori component. You, have, you can have phenomenal conceptions, uh, you can have the Cartesian ego, you could have uh, C qualia, you know, which are like attributes of things. And um, the brain has both the a priori part and the empirical part, but the toaster oven only has the empirical part. Before we know that the brain corresponds to a person, though, we have no idea whatsoever that the brain has the non-empirical part. And that's simply because we're studying empirically, we, we can't look at the a priori part from just looking at the empirical part because it's, it's a category variable. And that's, that's the reason there's an, an explanatory gap. And now, there's this other uh, thing I wanted to address is this assumption you have that the brain requires, that the mind rather, requires all these little parts. All right, now that is true apparently, and we get into sort of the, the mechanism for why that is with uh, quantum consciousness theory and how that ties into neuroscience and all that. However, from first principles, that's not at all obvious. It's, it's very, you know, in these debates, you criticize people who suggest you can have an immaterial mind associated just kind of from a brain, you say this is kind of silly. And it's not really silly at all, because it's incredibly easy to conceive how this could happen. Uh, simply put, you can just close your eyes, and you're aware of yourself. You don't have to look at the outside world to see that you're an eye, right? And the eye is entirely defined in a priori terms, and so because of that, you have no reason at all to assume that it's connected to anything empirical because those are, once again, two different categories. Um, so I was going to say, uh, also, yeah, the, the brain, this is a good example of another thing, the brain breaks up into little parts. Uh, you can chop the neurons apart, um, those have dendrites, synapse barriers between them, axons, but then the eye, well, you can't cut the eye in half at all. So the eye seems to be, in a way, it's possibly the simplest thing imaginable. You use just a, a single eye. It defines itself. It has no, you know, extension to any other concepts. You can, you know, put ideas into your head and think about them. But the the consciousness in and of itself is remarkably simple. It just is an eye. It's completely irreducible. So it's it's very easy to conceive how a a mind could just be there apart from some complex machinery we call a brain.